This is the procedure intravascular ultrasound. A patient with class 3 angina angiographically we found a significant lesion which is eccentric in nature at the level of LAD ostium level. It showed in different angle in different dimension to rule out that means whether to put stent or not to put stent to decide that we are using intravascular ultrasound for this patient to identify the visualize the plaque volume so this intravascular ultrasound gives the best result and we can take the decision effectively to treat the patient based on that intravascular ultrasound the result of the angioplasty sometimes the ambiguous lesion in case of calcium rich of calcium uh, filled plaque severe angulation and tortuous vessel can be visualized very clearly by intravascular ultrasound device this device is recently developed in interventional cardiology this will help to understand the stent is properly deployed and the stent is properly opposed the arterial wall particularly this intravascular ultrasound device routinely used in left main stenting calcific lesion at the bifurcation lesion sometimes to decide at the bifurcation level two two stents or single stent strategy most of the time the calcif calcific flock cannot be diagnosed by seeing a simple angiograph view in those case we use intravascular ultrasound in this patient i am engaging the guide catheter to the left coronary system at the level of left main the left main is engaged with ebu 6 french catheter through right radial artery in right side we observe the monitor with the parameters of heart rate oxygen saturation of the patient ecg monitoring now the left coronary artery is engaged with the guide catheter and we are preparing to introduce the ivs catheter through the guide wire where the guide wire is placed in left anterior descending artery at the distal level so generally intravascular ultrasound catheter doesn't need any preparation particularly it doesn't need any aspiration directly we can use the intravascular catheter through the guide wire during the procedure the blood pressure and the heart rate should be monitored properly and patient should be given minimum support of anticoagulation because that intravascular ultrasound catheter has 2.5 
front sides at the proximal end sometimes improper or inadequate anticoagulation can cause little slow flow and it can cause angina also so this should be properly engaged and the entire procedure is properly and safely can be done and we see little difficulty in passing the intravascular ultrasound at the sheet level so this part is very critical we should not injure the edge of the intravascular catheter now we are taking the intravascular catheter through the guide wire at the level of left anterior descending artery proximal level here you can see right side the monitor of intravascular ultrasound after engaging the intravascular ultrasound to the left anterior artery here we see the intravascular ultrasound imaging and here we pull the intravascular catheter 1 mm by 1 mm 1 mm per second by manually we withdraw the catheter here we see the images and here we are seeing left anterior descending descending artery and diagonal branches simultaneously we monitor the blood pressure heart rate and oxygen saturation and very importantly we observe the patient complaints here we don't give any anesthesia general anesthesia whatever it is we give only 1 ml local anesthesia at the wrist level so that way the skin under the skin 1 ml local anesthesia where we put the sheath and the entire system at the radial level the patient will not feel any pain it's a very tolerable mild pain here we are carefully observing the plaque side branches and very importantly and the patient complaint also should be taken so this is a left to anterior descending artery and left circumflex branches and then left main this procedure is a very safe and it takes almost a 10 to 15 minutes and this can be done to assess the lesion stenosis before the angioplasty and if the lesion is significant that should be stented even after stenting we can observe the stent opposition and we can ensure the stent is opposed to properly to the artery wall by the way the residual thrombus or stenosis or incompletely opposed to stent of the status can be identified very clearly with this intravascular ultrasound device 
once the procedure is over we will remove the intravascular ultrasound catheter ivas catheter and once again we monitor the hemodynamics heart rate saturation and we ask the patient about any complaint the very important after removing the intravascular catheter we have to give one injection to see the status of the particularly visualized artery because sometimes this intravascular very rarely can cause dissection so if it is not properly engaged or manipulated sometimes a rough manipulation can cause little arterial injury so for that after procedure after finishing the intravascular ultrasound every time it is important to give one injection to assess the arterial system on suppressive is over and this patient particularly we found at the ostium of lad angiographically it showed almost 60% eccentric lesion but we were doubted about the disease so that is the reason we took intravascular ultrasound to see the plaque volume so this is a great example the use of intravascular ultrasound and it gives the best decision in intervention in this case the intravascular ultrasound results shows very mild plaque that means 30 to 40 percent mild plaque there is no significant obstruction in the artery